Hey everyone, welcome back to BlenderDiplom.com. I'm Gottfried Hofmann and it's been a long time since I last recorded a video tutorial for Blender. And this time I've decided to um, share the tutorial creation with Frederick because he had found this cool way to create um, or to make particle systems emit new particles in Blender, which actually shouldn't be possible, but it is. And what I'm going to show you is how to use the video sequence editor to create a cool fireworks display using the scenes from, or the layers I got from Frederick. And what I did here, you can see it, I've set up um, various scenes here with the, wire, with the various types of fireworks and overlaid them in the video sequence editor, which gives a great amount of control over the timing and placement and everything. Of course, I've changed quite a bit in each of the um, strips, but I'm gonna show you this later in detail. The scenes in itself are arranged with just one layer each, and each firework in a different scene. And of course a little bit of compositing is also involved, but it's very, 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 very little, because in this case the compositing will actually take the longest to render. So let's keep that down. And now let's get started. So here it is, the file I got from Frederick, and he got the various types of fireworks on different layers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create multiple scenes with one firework in the scene each. And before we do that, let's make some preparations. Because if we do certain things now, we don't have to redo them for each scene later on. First of all, let's use sampled motion blur and use eight motion samples. That should be enough. The halos we're using for the fireworks, the halo particles, don't render with or don't work with vector blur. So we got to use sampled motion blur, but it's really not an issue in our case because they're rendering so fast. Let me show you. See, it's like rushing through the rendering one frame after another and in just right about seven seconds the entire firework including the motion blur, the full sample motion blur is rendered. Pretty fast, pretty cool those halos, so we don't need vector blur. Yeah, I'm glad. Second thing we're gonna do now is simple comp some simple compositing. Because that's another thing that should be copied for each scene later on. So let's just do it now. I'll turn on use notes and the backdrop and maybe get the more screen estate up there. Let me hit Control alt left click to create a viewer node. And what we're gonna do now is let's just add glare two times. So input, filter, no, filter, glare. Oh, where's the place? Down there. Just weird. Okay. Now we got the glaring and um, these four parts of the glare doesn't look that cool. So let's just use five streaks and yeah, that's perfect. And maybe reduce it a little bit. Mm. It will be smaller in, uh, later on when we're using it with the, with the rendering with the full resolution. So I think that's okay right now. And now let's duplicate the glare node, put it in. And this time we're not gonna use streaks, but Fog glow, which is just a simple glow. You notice it right here. And that's all about the compositing. Perfect. So let's go back to the before and start placing the various fireworks on the different scenes. Let's use this scene for the fireworks with the spikes and all the yeah, trails and the green dots. 
So let's call it uh, scene dot spikes. And now click the plus sign and create a new scene, but not a new one, but rather a full copy. And for this scene, we're gonna use yeah this kind of fireworks here. So let's maybe call it scene dot sparks because there are many many sparks. So what we're gonna do with this scene? First of all, the camera is currently on layer art 1. Let's move it to layer 2. So here we got the firework exploding. Perfect. And now let's go to layer 1. Hit A, X and delete everything. And to this, uh, to, let's do the same for layer 3. So whatever is there, let's delete it. And for this layer, A. X delete. We got the scene set up. So let's go back to the spike scene, hit the plus sign again. Once again, full copy. And this time we're gonna use the delayed one that will shoot the sparks later on. So let's go G set and move the emitter upwards a little, like here too. Yeah. Nice and perfect scene point delay. And wow, there's actually just one left, and that's the face, the small face. So let's go back to the spike scene, hit the plus sign, full copy, and on the, this layer there should be the face. Perfect. Um, let me just move it up a little, just as the other ones. And once again, get the camera there. Move layer. Whoop, it's this one. And delete all the other stuff. Pretty simple. And we are deleting the other stuff because this would just um, hog our RAM and we want things clean and fast. Especially fast, of course. Oh, I guess that one is a little bit up too high, and um, yeah, right about there. And maybe let's not call it scene dot face, but let's rather use the German term Gesicht. So we got our scenes. Oh, maybe in the spike scene, let's delete all the other stuff. We got it now on other scenes. Well, Delete, AA, delete, and of course move the camera to the first layer. So now we got our scenes all set up, and now let's create a completely new scene for the video sequence editor, scene.vse. And let's add a camera, because you need a camera, otherwise the scene won't render. And let's check. Yeah, it's all right. Now, up here, down to the video sequence editor or video editing. And unfortunately, this has um, switched back to the spike scene. So let's go to scene.vse and now we got the perfect setup. Because now when we go to default, we can choose a different scene where we just want to be. And when we go to video editing, we will always go back to scene.video sequence editor. And now there is one thing left I want to do before we are going into some serious video editing with Blender, and that's the um, particle caches. We need to bake them, because otherwise, when you scrub in the video sequence editor through the scenes or do the scrubbing here, you'll notice that there is a um, lot of problems with particles when you scrub them and you didn't have them baked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm heading over to the particles panel and for each particle system I'm gonna hit bake for each one. And then I'm gonna do this also with each other scene. Let's just pause this and get back when everything is over. 
So everything baked and thus on disk and safe where it should belong. Now when I'm scrubbing, perfect, no problem with the particles. And one thing to notice, down here when you bake it, the particle cache, um, this red line shows the particle cache and um, when it becomes dark it means the particles are safe on disk. Maybe you got just red dots every 10 frames and that might be because you are using a cache step size of 10. But for this I'm gonna use a cache step size of 1 so that for each frame the particle cache is perfectly in memory or on disk. Well, no matter whether you, when you use disk cache, the particle cache is saved on disk. When you don't use it, it's in the RAM of your computer. And um, it's just a little safer when you use a cache step size of 1 for this kind of endeavor. And what I'm also doing is here in the physics panel I'm using substeps, automatic substeps. I guess you don't really need this. I'm using this because I'm a little paranoid when it comes to particle systems in Blender. So let's go back to the video sequence editor and now let's add our first scene. Little thing, shift A, add scene and um, yeah, use the spikes. And of course move it to the front and now when we render the uh, or preview the animation with Alt A you see it's actually up here in the preview panel as an OpenGL preview. And so we of course can, without problems, add more scenes by simply duplicating it and set up a very simple display. But there is one thing that might be of a problem. First of all, you see only one render, or you see only one preview when it should be five. So let's delete the upper one and let's see what's wrong here. And that's the blend type. It's set to cross, which means um, when you set the slider to one, the upper one will only render and not the lower ones, no matter whether you get, whether you get a transparent background or not. So we need to switch the blend type to alpha over and the one below is showing. And now we can do this once again. Those um, strips here actually are aligning just like in After Effects or Premiere, the top one over the bottom one. No notes in the VJ Sequence Editor. And you notice maybe another problem, they're all at the same place. And the pretty cool tool to fix this is the camera override, which allows you us to use a different camera for each scene. And that's pretty cool because um, you could use the built-in transform tools and make things bigger or rotate them, but this will um, add small issues with the um, quality, because when you rotate a picture you lose a bit of quality, or when you zoom in you're losing quality, and by using the camera override, override we're not using losing any quality at all and got great control over the scene. So let's add five other cameras for this five other strips we placed in the video sequence editor by simply duplicating this one. Shift D and I'm moving in left, right, left, right each a little nearer and a little farther away so the it will be bigger and smaller just a little bit so you've got some variation and what I'd like them to be is I'd like them to be like in a row ah, not this one but all the other ones so let's ah, let this one also be in a row and a pretty cool thing you can do them to create the kind of camera arch arc is use the proportional editing. And what this gonna do is if I select this one and hit R, you see the circle that's been created. With the mouse wheel you can make it 
bigger, so each camera is in it. And now when I hit rotate, oh, sorry, R, and now when I rotate, the other ones will follow. And now if I use the other one and hit R again, we're getting this arch stuff. Now if I hit all cameras, turn off proportional editing, select them all again and put them back down a little, we got an arch that will look pretty good in the VSE. But let's first check each camera how it's looking. You can select other cameras and hit control and dump at zero to view it and this will look pretty good in the VSE. So let's hit back and for each one use one of the newly created cameras. Oh, by the way, since there are also other cameras in the scene and we can just select those one too, we need to check the cameras in the scene, the numbers, and it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So let's go back and camera 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And now when we preview this, hmm. Um, ah, there they come. Although they are a little delayed. Oh. No matter. And now, bang, 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 exploding. And looking pretty cool. Another thing I'd like to add is a little bit of color variation. Because at the moment it's all green, and with a little subtle bit of um, variation, this will look more believable, yet still clean and CGI-like, just like we wanted. So, for each node, you can enable the color balance. This work. This is working just like the color balance node in the compositor. Gamma is the midtones, gain is the bright parts, and for these two, just slightly click into it doesn't really matter in which direction, just away from the center and this would add a tiny bit of variation, just what we want. Okay. So next thing I want to add is the ones with the small delay. Here they are. And obviously the explosion is not starting at frame 1 and we got no trail. So what we can do is set the start frame to the first frame of the explosion. And now if you put this in the VSE it will also start at this frame. So you don't need to have Dean start at frame 1. You can use any frame you want in the VG sequence editor, which is also pretty cool. So here it is. And this time I don't want to just um, use the camera. Oh, I've just seen, I forgot to delete some stuff in the scene.delay, so let's delete. Delete this, and delete this, and move the camera up there, M3, oops, select it, M3. And three, and now it's here, so we can go to top view and duplicate it. I'm going to duplicate it this um, five times again. This will be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And what I'm going to do here is I want them to be randomly up and down, spread around. And this is once again possible using the proportional editing mode, but let's just use random, select the middle one, hit G, cause mouse wheel, make it bigger, and now let's move it upwards a little, and C, and hit Z. So it's um, just on the C axis the movement, and now they're moving up and down, but in a more like random fashion. So first this one, up, down, G, set, down, and now they should be placed really randomly. 
Let's check it by hitting Control Zero. Oh, it's up there. And now we can use the outliner here to check the other cameras too, how they are looking. Oh, cool. 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 And it's camera 2, 10, F, 12, 14. 2 and 10 to 14. So I'm going back to video editing and I'm adding the scene right when those are exploding. I'm gonna add the first of the delayed ones and it will start with a small explosion and then later there are gonna be the delayed ones. Yeah. And once again let's duplicate this a few times I go yeah six cameras so six times. And um, here let me use add as a mode because the blotch at the fir first frames the green thing won't look as good as when using alpha over. And I get I forgot to use add before I duplicated this. Ah, no matter. Let's just use a camera override for each scene. This one also ha already has the default camera. And this one is gonna get camera number 10. This one is gonna get camera number 11. And it's also be add. This one is gonna be add and it's using camera number 12. You see you have to be careful um, when working with this technique and you really have to do the, uh, certain things first like changing the blending mode because otherwise you're left with a lot of unnecessary work. So this one is done and now yeah you can of course add what you want like the let's, uh, let's just add another one of these sparkling sparkling themes and in this case I'm just using two so let's put this here here and maybe down a little and let's go directly to the video editor so to see how it's how it is looking and when those are starting to get off I guess around about here or when they have already exploded. Let me add the spark scene. Here this one and of course alpha over and now I can duplicate it. The second one use a different camera. The last one we've created. Things are going pretty fast already and this one is gonna get a little color balance once again. Maybe here and here. And now since we've added so many already and there's so much going on here, we can easily start adding other scenes back again, like maybe this one. Shift D, duplicate, boom, put it maybe here, here too. Uh, that's not a good place. Um, this one would be cool. It's, ah, it's the default one. Let's move this here up here. So while these are exploding, nah, don't forget to use alpha over again. Yeah. Now yeah, this one is gonna explode here. That's already perfect, but I'm gonna give this one a, a really, really strong, different color, a strong red. So we got really some, uh, yeah, maybe even some pinkish. So we got some. Some really new stuff going on, some big differences, and then we can also add a few of those delayed ones, maybe here and here. Ah. I'm gonna delete this one again, and let's uh, let's la rather use one of those down again here again, and now we can really just put fireworks over fireworks, maybe with different color balance each, like this one here, maybe a little bit bluish. 
And yeah, that's about it. Just go crazy with everything. And one thing I'm gonna show you um, at the last scene, the great finale, the smiley face here. And something you can also do, also do in the video sequence editor is you can add sound. So let me just add some sound. So let me hit Shift A, add a sound. And now let's preview this. Yeah, pretty easy, but there are a few things you need to know when adding sound in the video sequence editor or when working with sound here. And it's down here in the playback setting. Few things. First of all, audio video sync will mean that the video sequence editor will try to keep audio in sync with the video. Then frame dropping. When your scene uh, when you got too much stuff going on, let's say here, it will be jitterish because it's dropping frames, but you can still um, hear the sound perfectly synced due to the frame dropping option. And another pretty cool thing I'm always turning on is audio scrubbing, because now when I scrub through, at each frame where the playhead is, I'm hearing the corresponding sound. Pretty neat, eh? So that's about it. You can. That's how you use the video sequence editor and to align Varian's Blender scenes into one big and cool animation. And a few things to note before we stop. You might ask yourself, why didn't you al didn't you align the all those fireworks displays? Why didn't you create it in the default view? and um, animated it there. Well, there's one problem with the particles. I mean, for example here on the spike scene, you can animate the rocket that's flying upwards and maybe for the different rockets easily uh, duplicate it here and shift it around in the dope sheet. But what about the particle settings? And that's a big problem at the moment. You cannot animate the start and end frame, and of course neither the emission. So you would have to go um, for each firework. You'd need to have to change the start and end frame. And since we're using multiple particle system, that would be a really, really a boring and tedious work. And we can save all this by simply going to the video sequence editor and align things there. And also, notice this, Blender is always saying it can't create particles using this kind of modifier stack, but it can. Well, I guess what we've been doing here isn't allowed, it's cheating, but it's cool, so happy blending. <laughs>